Great, so let's get started. Uh, first of all, thank you so much to everyone who is joining in with us. We're gonna be recording today's webinar for those who can't make it live or if you wanna share it later. My name is Julia and I'm the program manager for Grow Ahead. So Grow Ahead uh, is an online crowding funding resource that connects people directly with small farmer organizations to fund climate resilient projects. So we're here today to hear a little bit more about a project that Grow Ahead Head has been supporting for a good, good amount of time, and that's the Coffee Diversification Project. So we're gonna be hearing um, a short presentation from some of the folks involved from the Coffee Cooperative Sesmach, the University of Vermont, and the Community Agroecology Network. And we're gonna end up with a little Q&A at the end, so if you have some questions as we're going along, just you can throw them in the chat and we'll circle back at the end um, and answer them. So I'm gonna do uh, some brief introductions of all of our panelists and speakers that we have today. So we have Rigoberto Hernandez Junapa, which is, um, who is a member of the cooperative SESMACH, um, and he's the Mexico coordinator for the assessment of diversification strategies in smallholder coffee systems of Mesoamerica project. Um, and then we also have um, Bernardo Roblero Perez, who is a young coffee and honey producer and has been working with Sesmach as an internal inspector for organic coffee for about three years. And he currently collaborates with the project as a community researcher. We have um, Carmen Cortez, who is the Associate Director of the Community Agroecology Network. And she's really deeply involved in the strategic planning and programming of the Coffee Diversification Project and the rest of CAN's work. We're very appreciative because she's joining us today to assist with translations. Um, Janika Anderson is a PhD student from the University of Vermont. Her dissertation work is linked to the three-year collaborative project. Um, and her master's thesis in development studies is focused on the social and economic impacts of coffee rust on small scale farmer livelihoods in Chiapas, Mexico. And then last but not least, we have Alejandra Guzman Luna, who is the program manager, the project manager for the Community Agroecology Network. And she is um, really there to coordinate the dialogue between the farmers, the coffee producers, and the scholars um, throughout the project. And so now I will turn it over to um, everyone to talk a little bit more about their work. Hello everyone, um, very excited to be here. Thank you, Grow Ahead, for organizing this webinar. Um, I will tell you a little bit about the history of this project. Um, this picture is from the community of uh, Laguna e Cofre in southern Chiapas. It gives you an idea what a coffee farm in Chiapas looks like. So notice here the diversity of land uses and, and productive activities. You can see fruit trees, milpa, maybe some animals running around there. Um, all these activities bring both food and income to to the farmer households. And also many farmers engage in other livelihood activities outside their farms. So why are we talking about diversification? Why, why are we interested in that? Um, we know that, that smallholder coffee farmers face a lot of challenges. For instance, coffee prices continue to fluctuate and it is increasingly difficult for these farmers to make a living with coffee. Also, climate change is affecting coffee farmers in many ways. So in this context, what we wanted to understand was, did livelihood diversification increase farmers, coffee farmers' resilience to different shocks and stressors? And if so, what kind of diversification? What are some of the resources that these farmers have? And what are some other factors that affect um, diversification strategies that, that the farmers undertake? So here's the, um, the objective of the, the larger, oh, excuse me, of the larger project, analyze how different livelihood diversification strategies affect food security, climate change resilience, and gender equity at the household community and regional scales, and how this relates to the sustainability of COVID-based agriculture systems, 
it's mouthful, but it's, it's the objective. So in 2017, we launched a three-year research project together with Santa Clara University and Community Agriculture Network to study livelihood diversification in two countries, in Mexico and in Nicaragua. So we are collaborating with two coffee clubs, SESMACH in Mexico and PRODECOP in Nicaragua, and one university in Mexico, ECOSUR, and another university in Nicaragua, La Una. And this project is funded by three European foundations through an initiative called Thought for Food. So we started this project with a household survey with around 300 farmers in total. And now for the past couple of years, we've been working with 50 farmer household, households in each uh, country using a variety of research methods. So our local research team consists of Rio, Ale, um, five community facilitators, um, myself and some other student, students and researchers. And in this project, we are applying what is called participatory action research. So in brief, that means that all actors are participating in designing and implementing the activities, not, not just researchers. And we are moving through cycles of research, reflection, and action. And often these overlap. And all these pieces are very important, and we'll, we'll see some examples of that um, later in this presentation. Now, Ale will, will say a few words about. Yeah. Hello, everyone. Yeah, <laughs> thanks. Uh, well, yeah, as Janika said, we, we have a par perspective of this project. And something that is very important in this kind of project is like to see everyone, like everyone has something to, to give us in the, in the process of our project. So that is why we have this, these uh, letters here that say, no one knows everything, Every, everybody knows something. So it means that we appreciate the experience, the different kind of knowledge or opinion of everyone. So if we go to the, to the next slide, please. Uh, we can see that here we, we agree something that we call reglas de la cancha. So it, it means that those are the rules uh, of the way that facilitators, the students, the scholars, the producers, even the SESMATCH, the organization, how everyone uh, have to, to have a relationship between the others. So this is important because we, we don't want to lose uh, any info. We don't want to, we want to keep all the experience and knowledge of, of the people. So it's important to hear all, all the, the different voices. For us, it has been like, a little bit hard at the beginning because as scholars we arrive in the community and we think and we are very sure that we know how to do the things but sometimes we start to talk with the facilitators and they say no every all that you have like construct and work on make no sense so we have to move everything and put it in, in order uh, so our work our surveys our everything that we have here in our mind in order to make sense for the for the people. Um, so Bernardo will talk more about the, the perspective of a facilitator. Bernardo, por favor. Hola, buenas tardes. Mi nombre es Bernardo. Este, participo aquí como, además de productor, como apicultor nuevo y como facilitador dentro del proyecto. Este, como facilitador, transmitimos información a, a los productores, mismo que también ellos nos dan este, información, es como un intercambio de, de información. Este, además, nos permite formarnos como investigadores comunitarios y a las familias como productores experimentadores. Carmen, sí, va a traducir. Sí, 
Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Bernardo. As a new beekeeper, producer, and facilitator in the project, uh, we facilitate information between producers, and it, it, this becomes more of an exchange and an, an, an of knowledges and experiences. And we work directly with the producer experimenters of the project. Eh, también como apicultor nuevo, eh, nos, re, eh, nos regalan los facilitadores y transmiten información que es práctica y útil para nosotros, como bien un ejemplo de ello es, es el calendario apícola, que nos sirve para identificar y saber cuándo y en qué momento se realizan los trabajos en el trabajo de apicultura. So as a new beekeeper and also as a facilitator, we create useful information that is available and accessible to all the uh, producers. Um, for example, we have here the calendar of beekeeping, and this tells us how and when beekeeping activities take place in, in the communities. Es muy interesante sobre el intercambio de información de facilitador a productor, este, conociendo las variedades, las variedades de alimentos y la manera de vivir de ellos, así como también la diversificación productiva de, de actividades. So this experience is really um, key and important because of the exchange between facilitators and producers. Uh, enable us to learn about all of the diversity in food and also the diversity of activities that we all are a part of. Bueno, a mí me toca platicar un poco acerca de cómo ha beneficiado el proyecto a la cooperativa. Well, my turn is to talk to you a little bit more about how the project has benefited the cooperative. Para empezar, este proyecto ha sido muy importante porque promueve un esquema de diversificación productiva que no es paternalista. Cada productor experimenta desde su perspectiva, desde su propia capacidad y con los recursos que tiene en la comunidad. Como investigadores no se extrae únicamente información, sino que también se proporciona información a los grupos de trabajo. So what is important about this project is that it really promotes a diversification model that is not paternalistic and that it respects kind of it respects the way that producers are handling um, their own productive uh, activities, and then it conforms to the realities that they experience. It's also not extractive because there is this exchange of information also being provided from the researchers to the producers as opposed to just extracting information. Para nuestra cooperativa, este proyecto es muy importante porque todos los resultados que se obtengan se van a compartir con los clientes de la cooperativa para que ellos se enteren cómo es que viven las familias que producen el café aquí en la Sierra Madre de Chiapas. So for our cooperative, this type of information that we're getting along with the results, um, these results will be shared uh, with all the uh, members of the cooperative so that they get a, a closer sense of how producers are actually producing their coffee in this uh, Sierra, this region, this mountainous region. Otro aspecto muy importante de la investigación es que también está generando capacidades al interior del equipo de facilitadores y con los productores también como productores experimentadores. And another key important part is that it's also facilitating capacity building with some of the facilitators and also all of the producer experimenters. Sí, puedes poner la siguiente, por favor. Sí, ellos son el equipo de facilitadores y la compañera Yannica nos va a comentar algo 
al respecto de la investigación. So here you see the pictures of all the facilitators and Jana go will talk to us a little bit more about that relationship. So yeah, I wanted to say a few words about my experiences as a student in this project. Um, for me, this has been really meaningful experience and I have really learned a lot. Um, perhaps one of the most impactful aspects has been the way we are working as a team. So we always work as a team and everyone's participation counts, everyone's expertise is valuable. So for instance, us as researchers, we can bring knowledge about research methods, but then our community facilitators, they know about coffee production and, and about other livelihood activities. Rio is an excellent facilitator, etc., etc. So it's a combination of lots of skills and knowledge and expertise. Um, maybe as a result of this blend of people and, and, and expertise, we have been using uh, a lot of different research methods in our research. Many of these are pretty creative, I would say. Um, here are some examples of um, participatory farm maps that we've been drawing with farmers. Uh, we've been developing agricultural calendars, hosting focus groups for women on, on wild foods, and so many other things. And these are really the spaces where uh, we learn together, as Alejandra and, and Rio already mentioned. It's about sharing and, and exchanging um, knowledge. And we always try to make these activities interesting for the farmers so that they don't turn into a burden because these farmers are busy with their activities and we don't want them to feel that we are occupying their time or space. Um, so personally, I've been always a little disturbed by the kind of researches, research where people go to communities and, and uh, collect data, but then never return or give something back to the community. And so by using participatory action research, um, we're trying to do things a little differently and break with some of the, what I would call, bad traditions of doing research. So we're always trying to make sure that everybody gets something out of whatever activity we organize. And I'll give you a few examples. So these pictures are from um, Feria de la Miel, which is um, a full day event for beekeepers that we organized last year. Um, and in this event, we used, for example, focus groups to exchange ideas and experiences about climate change and the future of beekeeping. But we also shared new information through presentations and a workshop where uh, the participants learn to make shampoo and, and cough syrup with honey and propolis. And then finally, we, we took a moment to share results from the household surveys that we did at the beginning of the project. And we had a, a honey tasting, as you can see in the picture. Um, another example is from Feria de la Milpa, which was a celebration of the three sisters, the traditional. Um, in the cropping system of maize, beans, and vegetables. Um, so the community facilitators, they prepared a play um, about the importance of conserving land raised varieties of maize. And we used the play as sort of inspiration to have focus group conversations with the farmers. Um, we also shared some of our research results again and some new information that had to do with, with Milpa. Uh, and then at the end of the day, we, we had a seed swap um, where everyone could take seeds of land raised land raid varieties of maize, beans and other crops uh, home. And finally, we, we shared some amazing food with ingredients from Milpa. And that's always an important part of uh, whatever activity we have. Um, celebrating the local ingredients, 
uh, having these social moments where we can talk about other things, um, get to know each other. So now, um, Glenn Rio will, will tell you a little bit about the um, learning exchange we had in Nicaragua last year and the, and the one that is coming up this year. Yeah, so I will start talking about the, the past exchange in Nicaragua that was in November. So eight people from, from here, from Mexico, we went to Nicaragua, to Esteli, to visit the PRODECOP. Uh, and for us was a very exciting experience. Here you can see a, a picture where are all the people from, from Mexico, from Nicaragua, and also the people who came from US. So he, this is a, a good picture because we can see like all the, the mix, the producers, the researchers, the people from the from the COP. So yeah, everyone at the end of the of the exchange, we I don't know, we we become like closed. So we were very happy to be closed, but also a little bit sad because it was the end of the exchange. And yeah, we have uh, many different. Uh, new information, new experience, new feelings even. And one of the most significant experience for us was this. It's called TADA. Sorry about the noise. Um, it's a truck, <laughs> sorry. So this, this is stores. Uh, it's one example that how to how the people in Nicaragua face something that is very common in, in Chiapas in Mexico, which is those thin months. So uh, the people in, in La Sierra in Chiapas spend like two or three months uh, having problems to get food, which is the same situation in Nicaragua, but the people in Nicaragua put all the corn and beans in those stores. And after a while, when, when they have problems to buy those foods in the in the stores because are very very expensive they can go to these popular stores and can get the the food by cheaper so for for us this was a, a big like inspiration that give us like some ideas that Rigo will talk in a while and another experience uh, important next please Danica. thanks uh, yeah, because all of them are, are coffee producers and so the experience about very technical stuff even, but also the, um, I think that the identity, to, to share the identity with someone that for us was like, oh, Nicaragua is very far away, but when you see two people from Mexico and from Nicaragua and sometimes we can think like, ah, oh, they don't have nothing in common. But it was, was funny how, how they were very, very close. They have so many stuff to share, to talk, to, yeah, to share. So at the end, they have a lot of stuff to do, especially between producers, coffee producers. And Rigo, can you talk about the, the facilitator's experience, please? Sí. Claro. Para los productores de México fue muy importante conocer todos los sistemas de diversificación que tienen en Nicaragua. Carmen. So it was very important for all of the Mexican producers to get a sense of all of the way that producers in Nicaragua were managing their farms. Y uno de los temas comunes a ambos países es el tema de la apicultura. Los facilitadores y los productores tuvieron la oportunidad de compartir experiencias sobre este tema. The one important theme was the beekeeping. And so for facilitating the producers, they had the opportunity to share on, specifically on beekeeping. Y como pueden observar en la imagen, son productores Jóvenes. Otra de las cosas que nos gustó mucho en el intercambio es la experiencia que están teniendo con los productores experimentadores 
y es algo que nosotros estamos ahora replicando en México. So as you can see from the image, all of the beekeeper producers here are young. And one of uh, the important and key experiences we found was also Nicaragua's use of experimental producers, something that we are now replicating here in Mexico. El intercambio en Nicaragua nos sirvió como para inspirarnos en hacer cosas diferentes con los grupos de trabajo acá en México y estamos entusiasmados de recibir a los compañeros de Nicaragua ahora en agosto. The exchange in Nicaragua uh, inspired, inspired us to take on different activities um, and with all the work groups now we are very enthusiastic to receive uh, our counterparts from Nicaragua. La siguiente, por favor. Y es justamente de este intercambio que la compañera Alejandra y yo les vamos a platicar en estos momentos. So now we'll talk to you briefly about this next exchange in Mexico with Alejandra. Yeah, so we are, we are getting ready to receive the people from Nicaragua and also people from U.S. Uh, for this second exchange that will be in on August and we have a lot of plans. We want to start with San Cristobal de las Casas, uh, knowing a little bit of Ecosur, which is a university in Mexico, <coughs> sorry. But then we are going to go to, the, to La Sierra, to the highlands, to, to visit many diversifications experience in like, uh, yeah. To be to to experiences there, uh, and also uh, a lot of uh, workshops uh, to I don't know like uh, exchange of knowledge. Yes, in in beekeeping also, but also how they uh, keep safe their own seeds and how they care of the soil. So. We are preparing, preparing all the all the stuff to make possible this exchange. And yeah, Rigo will will talk about more food security. Sí, puedes pasar la siguiente, por favor. Bien, lo que va a ocurrir en agosto es algo muy importante porque. Este, se van a hablar de temas que son comunes a ambos países. Uno de ellos es la temporada de escasez estacional que ocurre tanto en México como en Nicaragua. Carmen. So what will happen in August is that, and that's very important, we will discuss things that are common in each locality, um, and specifically the theme of the lean months that Nicaragua as well as Mexico face. Vamos a tener la oportunidad de compartir experiencias de cómo ocurre esa etapa en ambos países y cómo le hacen los productores de Nicaragua y México para subsistir en esa temporada de escasez estacional. So we will have the, we will have the opportunity to share how this occurs in each location and how each producer does their best to be able to deal with the situation and share those experiences with each other. Y nuevamente se le va a dar un espacio especial al tema de apicultura, considerando que es un tema que comparten ambos países y que hay mucho interés en profundizar más sobre cómo el cambio climático está afectando a esta actividad. And this time we will also give another space to beekeeping, which is come to be a very important theme for both, both countries and specifically in relation to how climate change is impacting, impacting this activity. También vamos a tener la oportunidad de compartir experiencias sobre los resultados que están obteniendo los productores experimentadores aquí en México y cómo, cómo los productores de Nicaragua le están haciendo allá. ¿Y qué resultados han obtenido ellos? 
So we will also be sharing um, on the results that are that are coming from the producer experimenters in Mexico and learn more about how uh, these activities are happening with the experimental producers in Nicaragua. Y también vamos a tener la oportunidad de conocer experiencias en campo sobre diversificación productiva. Vamos a visitar tres comunidades y el, el, el vivero comunitario de la organización. We will have also an opportunity during this learning exchange um, to be in the fields and learn directly from the producer activities there, uh, as well as uh, going to communities and learning from the nursery that is um, managed by the by communities. Y por supuesto, va a ser un, un momento especial para nosotros porque se van a reunir las familias que participan dentro del proyecto y va a ser un encuentro entre entre productores, investigadores y docentes que comparten experiencias, comparten puntos de vista, comparten información. Entonces es una gran oportunidad para nosotros y un gran gusto recibirlos acá en, en Chiapas. It will be a really truly special moment because this time we will also have the presence of all of the producers. So we will have the producers, the investigators, the, the students um, and facilitators that will share their experience, their point of view, and also how uh, they're sharing such points of views. Uh, so it'll be a great uh, opportunity uh, and we will receive them with enthusiasm here. Okay, gracias. Thank you. I would like to talk about this, this diapo, where is Ale? Janika, can you put it, please? Thanks. Yeah, there are, there are some stuff that I would like to talk that is something unexpected. As you can see, there is a, there is a young producer. Her name is Alejandra. And at the beginning of the exchange, she, she was a little bit shy and not sure about maybe her own knowledge and experience, but at the end of the change, she was in front of a lot of people talking, talking with a lot, of, a lot of, yeah, confidence about all her experience as beekeeper. I don't know a lot of things of beekeeping, but I remember that she was like very, she has a lot of expertise on, on this stuff. So after the opportunity that she had to talk in front of all, all the people there, she, she got a lot of confidence about herself and uh, uh, about her own capacities. And the other uh, big picture is about uh, some of the, the foods that people can have access in these thin months. So it's, it's something that sometimes is not very not at all a lot appreciated for the people there but it's something that grow like widely sometimes or yeah it's food that they can they can get in the in the forest on their on the meal pass on their plots so we are also trying to to put the, the attention in this kind of food that this food is no food for poor people is for 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 us is real food that we have to appreciate especially in those months where people are having problems with the other kind of food, especially with corn or beans. And that, that's it, thanks. So yeah, we appreciate your, your attention and uh, I don't know if you have some questions or something that you can share with us. Yeah, now if anyone has any questions for any of the panelists, you can um, put them in the chat or in the Q&A section, and um, we'll have everyone do their best to answer. Um, okay, we have a question uh, that is, how will the next uh, intercambio be concluded? Will there be um, a report? I think this is for maybe some of the um, academic sections.
Okay, I can, <laughs> I can answer that. Yeah, so we are planning on doing something similar than we did last year, or well, I was not participating, but the, the participants of the previous intercambio, um, there's definitely gonna be a report of all the activities and um, conclusions, but we are also trying to use um, the intercambio to develop some of the ideas that uh, we have been working on throughout the project, one being um, a strategic plan on livelihood diversification for the coffee co-ops. So that is something that um, we are going to be discussing a lot in, the, in this um, intercambio. So those are some of the kind of tangible um, outcomes of, of the intercambio. Great. Ale, do you want something or, or Carmen? Yeah, another important aspect of this is also tools that are accessible to the producers, as mentioned before. And so part of the intercambio or the learning exchange happening in August will be a space to create kind of those uh, tools that can also be adaptable to each location outside of um, publications or these strategic plans for the co-ops as well as uh, information directly for the producers themselves. Rigo, ¿puedes platicarnos sobre los mercados de miel, por favor? Sí, la... So the question was just, sí, production sold through local domestic markets or internationally? Actualmente el, el mercado de la miel está pasando por un momento un poco crítico, ya que algunos países están evitando la entrada de, de miel de, de México. Eh, eso ha repercutido en, en que los productores ahora es, no puedan comercializar la miel tanto como, como antes. Las normas internacionales ahora son más, más rígidas para hacer análisis a la miel que se exporta. Um, so, so now the honey market is actually passing through a very critical point um, because uh, honey uh, is not entering very easily uh, many other countries from specifically from Mexico. It, this has impacted the way that commercialization has occurred. Um, and it's really attributed to the international norms that have changed in um, analyzing honey. And... Por otra parte, de manera local, los efectos del cambio climático se están sintiendo también en la producción de, de miel, ya que puede ser que haya mucha floración, pero de manera inesperada llueve, y todo, las abejas no pueden salir a, a recolectar ese, ese, esa, ese néctar. Es, eh, hay temporadas en, en las que debería de, de haber flor y la, la floración se está atrasando o adelanta, adelantando, cosa que antes esto no ocurría en la región. So at the local scale, climate change has also had an impact and it's being felt as we see that there's a lot of flowering happening in certain seasons, but unexpectedly it begins to rain. It is during these times that bees can't go out to continue to harvest. Um, in other times you have um, synchrony uh, flowering times is, is not occurring or it's off. Flowering times um, aren't occurring when they're supposed to. Um, things that haven't been observed in the past. De ahí que se le está dando un espacio especial en este intercambio al tema de apicultura para conocer de ambos lugares, México y Nicaragua, cómo los productores le están haciendo para adaptarse a, a estos efectos del cambio climático y conocer diversas experiencias. So we are creating a space in the intercambio for precisely this, so that uh, for beekeeping, so that producers are sharing with each other methods of adaptation, as well as how they are ex other experiences related to this. Algo más? 
Got them? Anything else? Yeah, um, I would like to add um, something about the um, the workshops that we've been organizing for beekeepers to learn how to use their honey and propolis to make um, products that they can either use at home or potentially in the future sell. So this type of value added products could help to overcome some of the challenges related to the um, price fluctuations in the, in the markets. Thank you guys for those answers. Um, we have another question from uh, Beatrice. Well, first of all, she says, hello, congratulations on your project. I understand that diversification methods have included beekeeping, wild foods, vegetable gardens, diversified milpas, fruit trees or agroforestry, seed exchanges and diversity fairs. Is that correct? Thank you very much. So if someone wants to elaborate on that. I can also just translate for folks. Um, dice Beatriz uh, Oliver que ella entiende que los métodos de diversificación incluyen apicultura, este, el sacar uh, alimentos de los bosques, los jardines de vegetales, las milpas diversificadas, los árboles frutales, el intercambio de semillas y la diversidad de, de, de eh, intercambios. ¿Es correcto? Y dice, muchas gracias. Sí, es correcto. De hecho, hay productores que están probando con diversas este, variedades que producen néctar, pero un, uno de los, de los objetivos del proyecto incluso es conocer qué especies son productoras de, de gran este, néctar. Es parte de la investigación este, conocer ese, esa, esa diversidad de plantas. No sé si entendí correctamente la, la pregunta. Si me quieres ayudar, Alejandra. Sí. Sí. Yeah. Uh, no, yeah, it's, it's totally right, Beatriz. This is what our project is about. So, yeah, the diversification of, about on-farm activities, but also the diversification in terms of the diversity of species, species that we can eat, that we can even yeah introducing the in the market so yeah it's everything this both kind of diversification if i can add quickly also some farmers have other animals like um cattle cows or pigs and also poultry and other uh, birds. Great, yeah, I think that it's really interesting to see how the project has um, brought out so many different types of diversification um, techniques that different farmers are implementing in uh, both Nicaragua and in Mexico. Um, so it looks like that is all of our questions, um, which is awesome. So uh, thank you so much. This webinar has been a great opportunity to hear from really all the folks that are deeply involved in the project. Um, so supporting specifically this project, but along with um, CAN, CESMACH, Prodecoop, the University of Vermont, and Santa Clara University and ECOSUR has been like a huge priority for Grow Ahead. Um, we ran a, the, a campaign and crowdfunded for $7,000 for the last exchange that happened in um, Nicaragua. And now we're working um, to crowdfund $10,000 to support the next exchange, which will bring um, the Nicaraguan producers to Chiapas, um, as we heard here today. So we can really use all the support and spreading the word out about the campaign um, and contributing through the Grow Ahead website. Uh, so thank you so much to all of our speakers. Thank you guys for taking your time to, to give us more information about
the great work that you guys have been doing um, and also everyone to, who has been so engaged uh, both through the webinar and through a lot of the other materials that we've been having um, to learning how we can really band together to support small scale farmers. So thank you. 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 Thank you.